Hello and welcome to this video concerning payroll year end in Sage Business Cloud Payroll. In today's agenda, we will be looking at new legislation, preparing for the year end, processing the year end, and new year processes. So let's start with new legislation. March sees an update that includes all the changes and calendars for the new tax year. And this will update the PAYE, national insurance, national minimum wage, statutory payments, sick pay, and auto enrollment. So for PAYE, the emergency tax code has been defined as 1257L, and the tax codes have been uplifted as follows. L by 7, M by 8, and N by 6. And you can see the new PAYE bandwidths and the corresponding rates in the table as shown. Next, we have the changes being made to national insurance. Here, here we can see the new weekly, monthly, and yearly rates for the lower earnings limit, the primary threshold, the secondary threshold, the upper earnings limit, the upper secondary threshold for under 21s, and the apprentice upper secondary threshold for under 25s. Next, we have a simple table showing the age ranges and corresponding hourly rates for national minimum living wage. So statutory payments have had various rate changes, but the main rules around processing are remaining the same. So whilst you look at the payment types and corresponding rates, I'll explain the statutory payment rules. So kit days or keep in touch days are 10 days during the leave. Split days or shared parental in touch days are 20 days during the leave. And the SER reclaim or small employers relief remains at an additional 3%. Statutory sick payments have again had various rate changes, but the main rules around processing are remaining the same. Of course, the system will calculate all of these changes for you. Here we have the trigger and limit rates for auto enrollment. Again, the system will prompt you when you have new eligible job holders. Then we have the update for student loans. We can see there is a new plan in place. Plan four is the new Scottish band. Before we move on to preparation for the year end, the employment allowance is unchanged from the new rules last year. The reclaim stays at £4,000. Access to the employee allowance is restricted to employers with a national insurance contribution bill below £100,000 in the previous tax year. And this must be applied for each year. And lastly, the attachment of earnings is unchanged. Now let's look at preparation in terms of week 53, advance pay and directors national insurance. So why is there a week 53? So the number of days in the tax year doesn't divide into whole weeks. In other words, 52 weeks of seven days is 364 days. Week 53 is Monday the 5th of April in the 2020-2021 tax year. You will have a week 53 if your normal payday is a Monday and you last paid your weekly employees on the 29th of March, you last paid your fortnightly paid employees on the 22nd of March, and you last paid your four weekly paid employees on the 8th of March. So it makes sense that monthly paid employees cannot have a week 53. So how is week 53 calculated? P 
PAYE for week 53 is calculated on a week one, month one basis, so it is non-cumulative. This means year-to-date figures are not included and the tax figure is worked out in isolation. If this results in the employee underpaying tax, the HMRC will issue a P800 to correct the amounts. And national insurance is calculated using the normal thresholds for the applicable pay frequency. Let's try to look at this in a simpler way. Are your employees monthly paid? If yes, you do not have a week 53 and can go ahead and process your payroll as normal. If your normal pay date falls on Monday the 5th of April, you do have a week 53 and should process your payroll as normal with a 5th process date. We recommend you do not advance any pay over the payroll year end, especially to directors, and we would advise to process periods separately with the correct dates to ensure each period is calculated in isolation correctly and keep your reporting clear. There are two director statuses available in payroll. Whichever director status is selected, by the end of the year, the overall NI contributions will be the same. There is direct accumulative, this director method only starts calculating on annual earnings over the primary threshold, or PT. This means they may start the year with no NI contributions at all. Then there is director per pay run. This director method uses exact percentages like normal employees. This is not recommended, however, for directors receiving a bonus during the year. In the final pay period, there is a recalculation performed on the earnings to ensure that the correct NI has been paid overall. To check the amount of NI payable is showing correct, work out how much national insurance is due for the whole year and deduct the amount of national insurance paid so far. Please be aware if they have only been a director for part of the year, the theory is the same However, you work out how much NI is due using the pro rata table from the CA44 booklet. A common call that technical support get is the director's NI contribution doesn't look right. This can be down to a year end recalculation that has sometimes been missed or there's been a pro rata calculation based on when the directorship began. Both possibilities should be checked. Another possible reason is the director will not pay national insurance until their earnings have reached the primary threshold. The software uses the legislation tables and will deduct when appropriate. In order to calculate the director's national insurance, you will need to gather the following information. This table shows what is needed and where to find it in Sage Business Cloud Payroll. So now let's look at how to process the payroll year end itself. Simply go to the year end tab and then you will be able to review the employee pay, the P11, submit your EPS, and review the P60 certificates and mark them as distributed to all employees when completed. Firstly, let's look at the P11. Run the P11 report to check if there are any errors or potential missed periods. You will then be able to review the values per employee and make any corrections before continuing. Now let's look at submitting your final EPS. Enter a date only if the company has ceased trading. Then check the figures are correct and click Next. You can now click Submit or click Change if you need to update your gateway credentials. 
You can now see the P11 step is complete and the final EPS is submitting. Lastly, let's look at how you can review the employee's P60s. You can view an individual or click all to see in one view and save time. Here is an example of the P60 as it is shown. Now let's look at New Year processes. We will cover off Employment Allowances or EA and Small Employers Relief SER, Tax Codes and Early Year Update. Once you've completed your year end you will be able to record a claim for your employment allowance on the summary screen for the next taxed year. You will then be able to select if the employer qualifies for Small Employers Relief or SER. As part of the first pay run of the new year, the prompt shown will ask you to confirm the correct tax codes. Simply change the code in this screen and click save to apply it for the new year. If you need to make a correction or an amendment to your payroll in the previous tax year, it is important that you notify the HMRC of any change. You can do this through the year-end menu with an earlier year update or EYU. Don't forget that the in-app help centre is always available to help you process your payroll year-end. Simply click on help at the top right of your screen wherever you are in the software. So to recap what we've covered, hopefully now you have a better understanding of the new legislation, preparing for the year end, processing the year end and the new year processes. Thanks for watching.